started uh, actually videotaping here, uh, we were discussing about the different aspects of the goddess in this tradition, and I did a little research on that. Good. Very, very enlightening for me. Cool. Um, could you explain mm -hmm. how these different aspects represent archetypes within ourselves? Mm -hmm. Wisdom goddesses. Um, are, these are goddesses, they, they developed in, collect, in a collective form um, around the 13th, 14th century, and they kind of arose as a response to the Orthodox tradition, and a lot of the, its limitations, its limiting beliefs, these conditions around our natural expression. The Brahmanic The Brahmanic order, right. Yeah. And around purity, what is considered pure, yeah, what is yeah. impure, and often what was or what is demonized or considered polluting or impure is uh -huh. these female states, menstruation, mm -hmm. birth, um, sex, that's not only female, of course, and death, too. Yeah. And so it's these states of consciousness, really, in, in, in any of these, birth, menstruation, sex, where we're really, our consciousness shifts, we're on a threshold, right? Mm -hmm. And these goddesses are very, understood to be very fierce, and also embody the sensuality and the beauty and the grace and the power. So they're everything goddesses. They're not just restricted to being one emanation <laughs> right. of, you know, not just pretty and sweet. Sweet, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like Barbie. Or something, right. You know, and so they're a force, but they really express the full nature and like of, of femaleness and our yeah. potential. And it's not just for women, it's for men too, because they are these forces <clears throat> excuse me, of consciousness within and so they are for example they um some will say that it's the this collective form are all aspects of the mother call or different expressions of call uh, the, so the one and the many mm -hmm. and all of them though they um they they're very paradoxical they're very unconventional and what's interesting in the in our approach to them is that mantra the word for mantra in the case of the tantric wisdom goddesses is, is vidya. So they're called mahavidyas, great wisdom goddesses. Mm -hmm. Vidya means knowledge. Yeah. Um, it means wisdom. And so their mantras are vidyas. They're so potent because they contain the wisdom, the knowledge of the universe. Mm -hmm. And so they really invite us to go beyond what society has said is possible for us or this conditioning or how we should behave in relationship or how we should you know even think about death or birth or any of these states they get kind of wild these guys they're wild yeah. they're definitely wild and then they also have their more quiet states too yeah. and they represent you know one of them that's is very feared and um even and these goddesses even in certain parts of India are not, are, are feared still to today, mm -hmm. to this day, and in fact there aren't even many temples to them because um, a lot of the, the artists are afraid to even misrepresent them. They don't want to invoke their wrath. Mm -hmm. But I really think what this is saying is it's, it's an understanding that you cannot completely deny the sacred female. But she may have been marginalized, she may have been pushed to the periphery, <coughs> and right, rightfully so, there may be this anger and this power that wants to be expressed. But mm -hmm. she's not only that, she wants right. to come back in she, and be honored for the fullness that she is. That she is this destructive force that's within each of us, and she's that creative force. And she's that sexual force that is that erotic creative power. Yeah. And I don't mean that only in that act of, you know, between two humans. I mean, it's really that uh, the pulse of all existence. The, the Shakti desire, itself. The Shakti itself that yeah. propels us to create, um, to experience, yeah, in deeper ways, if we are open. So they're amazing, awesome goddesses, really just incredible. They really, there's a um, Tara who takes us to the goddess of liminal realms. Tara means star, and in her Hindu form, 
she has this fiercer emanation. And so we are familiar with the Buddhist Tara, who's a god of compassion. compassion. Right. This Tara is compassionate too. And, and she hangs out in cremation grounds. You know, she does these practices there, or her practitioners or devotees are invited to do practices in these places where, you know, culturally there's a lot of fear. Right. And these are places that, you know, we see that there's, there's bodies that have, you know, spirit has left. And so there's um, just a whole different understanding around what is sacred. And yeah. In, in our culture uh, here in the Western world, mm -hmm. um, the, the goddess has been pretty confined yes. and uh, that's really created an imbalance Absolutely. in our culture. Exactly. Um, so as a musical alchemist, I'm always looking for harmony and mm -hmm. um, we see that this need is arising very strongly now in our culture and has for the last three or four generations to balance the, the feminine and the masculine qualities uh, within ourselves. Um, there's more to the uh, goddess than the Virgin Mary. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yes. and that, that she's not that she's not just the virgin or the whore. Or the whore exactly. That's what's so amazing about goddesses like the Mahavijja, that you see right. they're everything, they're that full spectrum. Yeah, and we'll, we'll um, give you some links to learn mm -hmm. more about these goddesses. Yes, good idea. Um, Why the Psalms of Sex, you ask? Well, unless you're one of the aliens that drops by occasionally for a visit, all of you listening to me and watching this video got here by sex. <laughs>